everyone welcome welcome back to my channel in today's video i'm going to be telling you how i got grade nines in biology chemistry and physics and giving you guys tips for gcse science as someone who was consistently at a grade eight or nine throughout my year 11 career and i also ended up taking biology and chemistry for a level and i also considered taking physics for a level so i do genuinely enjoy learning about science i'll also be linking free resources as always and i feel like i have a bit of a series going on with GCSE videos so do check out the rest of my channel for advice on other subjects and hit that subscribe button before we jump right in. Tip number one is to pay as much attention as you can in the lesson. This sounds so basic but genuinely force yourself to focus on all of the lessons no matter what. I think for me the reason why I enjoyed science a lot and why I would do well on topic tests and my actual GCSEs as well is primarily for this reason. It's definitely easier said than done to engage in lessons like like putting your hand up and answering so if you're someone that finds that to be out of their comfort zone then don't worry take things one at a time and start by just focusing and listening to the teacher even if you think the teacher or the lesson doesn't help because it will still help you retain some information i would say do any question that you get given in the lesson by yourself and pretend it's like an exam always so that you're doing those questions seriously i also found that especially with physics once i started doing the questions with my full attention and i started focusing a lot more in the lessons as well i started getting the hang of it way more compared to year 10 where i was a bit more laid back and i wouldn't care too much about the questions or any work set so i would say do homework work straight away after school and do any work set so that your memory of the content is like rejogged. Tip number two is to not neglect practicals. It is so 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 easy to miss the required practicals and think that it doesn't really matter too much but did you know that 15% of the paper's total marks would be on required practical stuff and with GCSE exam boards every year they always like to throw in a question where you have to describe the method or the variables so I would say make a list of all the required practicals and then I would want watch the videos for each of them to try and remember what they were like and to learn about them if I couldn't do them in school for example if I was like absent in school when we did them anyways I would say for each required practical memorize the method and the independent dependent and control variables now quick science lesson independent variable is the variable that you're changing per turn of the experiment so when you're repeating whatever you're changing that's the independent variable and it's always the x-axis of the graph if there is a graph the dependent variable is what you're measuring and that's the y-axis of the graph and control variables are variables that stay the same throughout the experiment and things that are just controlled throughout so that they don't affect the results i would also have an idea of what the results should be and why they come up like this because knowing the science behind the practicals helps you so much with content as well you should also know what common errors like a student can make when they're conducting this experiment and what the role of certain equipment is so for example for a chemistry practical on exothermic reactions i remember that you used a polystyrene cup with a thermometer to see if the temperature increased or not however with this experiment you would use a lid to keep the heat in so the purpose of the lid as silly as it sounds could easily be a question that comes up tip number three is to do questions after questions after questions as with any subject but especially science do as many practice questions as you can this is literally the main reason that i think i got grade nines because doing questions is so incredibly helpful and you won't realize how many times exam boards would just get lazy and just put in the same question again that they put in a paper years ago plus the more questions you do even if you get them wrong you can learn from the mark scheme and understand the content better you may also ask Anya where do you get your questions from honestly my main port of call was PMT or physics and math tutor the questions by topic on PMT are amazing and so are their flashcards I love their website so much and also if you're looking for more questions and if you ran out of PMT questions I would also recommend getting the grade eight to nine cgp question book i think the questions definitely pushed me out of my comfort zone but that's good because if anything like that came up in my actual exam i'd be prepared and well equipped to answer quick little tip number four is to use cgp flashcards this was another resource i really liked and i would highly recommend getting i think it's a lot of effort to make your own flashcards so having this was super handy and i would take them around if i went on a trip or if i was just in the car for a long time plus the little jokes throughout the whole flashcard set kept me going and i think that they were so convenient to just take around and just to revise anywhere tip number five is to use the specification like it is the 
manuscript of your life. Genuinely, the specification exists for a reason and is literally everything the exam board can test you on. Using the specification as a checklist as you go along and revising through based on that is the best thing that you could do to revise because it ensures that you're covering everything that could come up. Obviously, with science, a lot of it is applying knowledge. So questions might seem unfamiliar, even if you know it. But once you've understood the foundations and the basic concept, you'll be able to apply knowledge in the snap of your fingers. Tip number six is the YouTube channels that I would recommend watching. This was another thing that was so life-saving to my grades. And my two favorite ones were free science lessons and Cognito. Free science lessons is honestly a god in terms of GCSE science. He is so to the point and concise. And I don't know why, I just found it so easy to grasp the knowledge of a topic after watching his videos. For required practicals, I would highly recommend his videos on them because his method is so clear. And he always talks about like the variables or the errors that could occur, which is very, very important for exams as well. He also uses the specification so that you can be assured that he is covering everything that needs to be covered. Now, another YouTube channel that I really liked and their website was also really good was Cognito. I would 1000% recommend this to all my fellow visual learners out there because him drawing out the like mechanisms or the processes, just everything helped me visualize everything so much better and it made my understanding of this topic 10 times better. Tip number seven is a biology tip and that is to use diagrams and memorize them and blurt them out because biology is one of those subjects where visualizing where things go in terms of processes is so so helpful. The lock and key enzyme model for example and how temperature or pH affects the active site shape it's so useful to draw them out but some things like anatomy especially I would say to say things out loud to help yourself remember them. I remember that's how I learned the anatomy of the eye so I would say galeria, cornea, iris, pupil, lens, ciliary muscles, suspensory ligaments, retina, optic nerve. And fun fact, the anatomy of the eye was actually removed from my GCSEs, but I can still remember blurting this out and I can still remember it to this day for some reason. Tip number eight is to memorize the formulas for chemistry. I feel like for sciences, the physics formulas are always talked about, but no one ever appreciates the importance of the chemistry formulas. These can be so high yielding in terms of marks and easily there could be a six mark calculation that comes up and it's crucial to know them well so that you can do these calculations with ease and get those six marks easily which you can do by practicing lots and lots of questions as mentioned in one of the previous tips also for chemistry practice drawing structures out especially because a lot of the time for organic chemistry it's so important to know where the carbon goes or where the hydrogen goes or where all the elements are on the actual structure of the molecule so the more you practice by just drawing things out like equipment or structures of the molecules just on a whiteboard over and over again the more it will be drilled into your memory. Tip number nine is about physics and that is to know how the units work even if you have the formula sheet. The units is a massive massive area that students always slip up on and they're such easy marks to grab if you practice enough. Learn the units and also learn how to use a formula sheet in other ways. So for example if you get asked about like the definition of speed you can easily use the formula sheet and look at the equation for speed and say that the definition of speed is the distance traveled over a certain period of time. Therefore, if there's any definitions of quantities that come up, use the formula sheet to do so. Speaking of physics and science in general, tip number 10 is to use brilliant.org, which is a great website to practice your science skills on. And it is also the sponsor of today's video. Brilliant is where you learn by doing with thousands of interactive lessons in maths, data analysis, programming, and AI. Brilliant is one of the most effective ways to learn and it's a learning platform designed to be uniquely effective. You can play around with concepts and there's loads of lessons filled with hands-on problem solving work. It's a method that's proven to be six times more effective than watching lecture videos and all content on Brilliant is crafted by an award-winning team of teachers, researchers and professionals from lots of different backgrounds such as MIT, Caltech, Duke, Microsoft, Google and more. Apart from science there's so many different areas of subjects that you can dive deeper into. For example maths, programming, data and AI courses which can help you build real skills and develop your intuition. You can build and use formulas to solve real problems in businesses and everyday life and you can peek under the hood of large language models like ChatGPT to understand the concept powering today's technology. Applying data skills to real world scenarios like running simulations to predict the winner of the World Cup is another thing that you can do on Brilliant. To try everything that Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash study lifestyles or scan the QR code on screen now or you can click the 
the link in the description and you'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Bonus tip before I end the video, tip number 11 technically is to read the examiner's reports after doing a past paper in timed condition to see common mistakes that people have made when they did the past paper in the actual year that it was released. Examiner's reports are important for all subjects but for science especially there's so many mistakes that are repeated year on year by so many students so to avoid also falling in the trap read the report to better prepare yourself for your exam okay that's all for today thank you all so much for watching and i wish you all the best for your gcse exams be sure to subscribe if this video helped and i will see you all later bye